If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve this question on your own first before listening on. We know that in order to calculate the work that a particular force does on an object, we have to multiply the magnitude of that force by the displacement by the cosine of an angle. And that angle is going to be between the force and displacement. And in this case, since there are three forces acting on this object, we're going to actually say that the work done on the object is equal to the work done by force one, plus the work done by force two, plus the work done by force three. And for each of the three works, we're going to use the expression force times distance times cosine of theta. For example, for work one, we would take the force F1 and multiply it by the displacement, and then the cosine of the angle between the displacement and F1, and then so on. So we'll fill in the other two expressions for work for W2 and W3. And then we will begin to plug in some of the known values. So we can begin with the force F1, and the question states that the magnitude of that force is 5 newtons. So we'll plug that in for F1. And then for the distance, we are told that the object moves leftward by 3 meters, so we can plug in 3 meters. Notice that we're plugging in just positive 3 meters because for the distance as well as the force, we are only interested in the magnitudes of these values, not their signs. We then get to the cosine of theta 1. Again, theta is between the force and the displacement vector. Now, force F1 is pointing to the left, as we can see in the diagram, and then the displacement also is pointing to the left because the question indicates that the object is moving leftward. Now, the angle between the displacement vector and force F1 is 0 degrees because they're both pointing in the exact same direction. So we would fill in 0 degrees for theta 1. We can next move on to F2, which is given to us as 9 newtons. Once again, the distance is 3 meters. And then for theta 2, we want to figure out what the angle between F2 and the displacement is. Now, we were told that the angle that's marked theta in the diagram is 60 degrees. And that's for this force that's pointing off in this direction right here. And we've already drawn the displacement vector pointing off to the left. Let's sort of drag it down so that its tail is meeting the tail of F2. In other words, we can put the displacement vector right here, basically right on top of F1, and we'll label that with D. And we're looking for the angle between that displacement vector and the force F2. In essence, we're looking for this angle right here. Now we know, of course, that right along this dotted line and displacement vector D is 180 degrees. This angle right here has been marked as 60. That means that the blue angle that's marked has to be the 180 degrees minus the 60 degrees, which of course is 120 degrees. So that's going to serve as the angle between force F2 and the displacement. So we'll fill that in for theta 2 over here. And then finally on to F3. We were told that the magnitude of F3 is 3 newtons. Kind of running out of room here. The distance once again is 3 meters. And then the angle between F3 and the displacement vector, hopefully we can see, is a nice 90 degree angle. So we're going to squeeze in the cosine of 90, although it turns out that the cosine of 90 is actually 0. So 0 multiplied by 3, and then again by 3, will actually cancel this term out. So we can pick up our calculators, make sure they're in degree mode, and type in this expression plus this expression. And when we do that, we get... 1.5 and the unit of work we can see will be a newton times a meter which is also equivalent to 1.5 joules so this is the correct answer to part a of the question now part b asks us a simple question does the kinetic energy of the trunk increase or decrease and we can answer that question by consulting the work kinetic energy theorem which tells us that the work done on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy well, we just determined the net work done on this object, and it turned out to be positive 1.5 joules. So we would fill that in for the net work on the object, and we would see from this work kinetic energy theorem that the change in kinetic energy is also a positive 1.5 joules. So when the question asks, does the kinetic energy increase or decrease, it certainly increases, and specifically it increases by an amount equal to 1.5 joules. 
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so that you could stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that's displayed on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.